Hi everyone, my name is Sanjeev. In this video, I will explain and demo use of JSON logger in Mule application. Why JSON logger? JSON logger makes sure the developer logs the data in a standard way inside application or across the business application in your organization. JSON logger logs the data in JSON format. It is more human readable. Data aggregator platform like Splunk, Alk can index the JSON fields very easily. And you can search the log for those JSON fields. JSON logger also provides a trace point like before request, after request, start of the flow, end of the flow. So you can know that the log data is logged at what point of the execution of the flow. Log data also provides the location information. It have the file name, it have the flow name, it also have the line number. This information help the support team and they can troubleshoot the issue more easily. You can filter the sensitive data using JSON logger. You can also mask the sensitive content. For example, you can mask the social security number, you can mask the red card number. JSON logger also can send the log to the external systems. So it can send the log to the ALK or Splunk. JSON logger can also calculate the elapsed time. So you can calculate time taken by mule processors to complete the certain process. JSON logger is not available in Exchange by default. You need to build the JSON logger code and you need to deploy the JSON logger in your organization. Once the JSON logger has been deployed to the Exchange in your organization, you can include the JSON logger connector dependency in Mule application from the Exchange. I will start the demo now. I will clone the JSON logger code here under slash projects directory. I will open the git bash here. Git clone. I will search the repo name in Google. We have a blog written on JSON logger. Let me open this. You can go through this blog. It gives good information about JSON logger. For report detail, I will click this link. I'll go to JSON logger. And from here, I will copy the HTTPS repo URL. I will clone the repo here. We got the JSON logger code here. I will go to the template files. From here, I will copy the settings.xml and I will copy to the .m2 folder. So Maven will use this setting.xml. Let me copy here. Here, I will change the username for uh, Exchange to server and I will provide my any point username. It is Sanjeev35 password M M222. So this is my username and password for any point platform. I will save the file. I will go back to the cloned JSON logger repo. Now I will open the JSON logger. I will open the pom.xml. I will replace this value mule version and I will replace this value for all other 
versions as well because this 2022099 does not works this version does not exist anymore so i will do the replace and i will replace this value by 2022019 so I'm replacing three, four places. For some reason, the original file does not work. I have to make this change to make it work. I will close this file and I will go to the git again. Let me show you my Maven version. I am using the Maven version 3.6.0 the current version is 3.9 point something but that version does not work so I have to switch back now to deploy and build I will use this script this comes with the code in the repo so I will run this command I have to pass a argument to this uh, script that is a uh, organization ID of my AnyPoint platform. So I will get the organization ID from AnyPoint platform. I will go to the access management. I will go to the business groups. I will click on my organization. This is my organization ID. I can copy this. I can copy from here or I can copy from here as well at the same value now I will go to the this folder and I will run this script and I will pass my organization ID as the argument let me copy it again paste okay hit enter sorry deploy to exchange i will give my organization id and hit enter now it's building the code and it will deploy to my organization so let me show you my uh, exchange right now I don't have any JSON logger there. Exchange. Lag stack. This is my organization. And right now, there is no connector there. There is no JSON logger. So once this script is successful, I will see a JSON logger here. It takes some time. Because downloading some dependencies. So build is successful. So that means JSON logger has been deployed to exchange inside my organization. Let me rephrase it. So I can see this now connector, JSON logger mule 4 connector. So we have JSON logger connector in exchange under my organization. I'm going to use this JSON logger in mule application. So I have a project created JSON logger demo. Here I'm using listener. This is a path slash test and I'm using default configuration, HTTP listener configuration. And it does just uh, one transformation. It creates the message successful. Now I will put uh, some logs here. I will use the JSON logger. I will go to the search and exchange so I'm searching logger here okay I have not logged in so I have to log in first sign in now i will search the logger again
I got the JSON logger that we just deployed. I will edit. JSON logger dependency has been added to our project. When we added JSON logger, we also got the dependency for AMQP and JMS. If you don't want these, you can remove these dependencies. Now I will show you JSON logger. Here we have logger and logger scope. So I will click the logger. I will drop it just after HTTP listener. Here we can create a module configuration. So I will click plus sign. So by default, we get the application name, application version already set using property file. And for environment, we can give environment dollar mule dot environment. So when we will log the data, this information will be logged automatically. Application name, application version and environment. Let's uh, click OK. So we specified the module configuration, JSON logger config. Now we need to put a message that we want to log. So it's a kind of a summary of the log. So I will say flow starting. You can put any message here. I put it flow starting. And in the content, you can give the attributes or you can give the payload. Here by default, we have this value set. This will log the payload. And if the payload is in XML, it will stringify. But if it is a in JSON format, it will print in JSON format itself. So I'm logging the payload here. Now, this is a trace point. We can give any trace point like after request, after transformation, before request. So we are calling any external service. We can put the log before and after. So we can put one log before request. We can give the trace point as before request. And we can put one logger after the external request. And we can give the trace point as after request. In this case, start default is fine because our flow is just starting. This is priority. So this is a log label. You can give a info, error, debug, trace, bar. Here you can give a category of a log. If you're not providing any category, then the category would be this. This will be the category by default. But you can provide a different value as well. Now I will put one more logger after the transform message. Here we are using same JSON config. I can give the message flow exiting because we are exiting the flow. Here I'm logging the payload, content is payload here. Trace point. Because this is the end of the flow, I can select end. Priority info is fine. Category is default. Save it. Now I will run this application. Application has been started. Let me clear the console. Now I will invoke this endpoint slash test. So I will go to the postman. And here, I will pass the payload using post method. So this is a list of members. We have four members, David, Todd, James, and Henry. So I'm sending the JSON payload, array of JSON objects, I'm sending that. And this is my complete URL. Click send. We got the response, message successful. Let's observe the console now. So this is the log that we printed here, JSON logger. So here we got the correlation ID. 
This is very useful because uh, using correlation ID, we can link the complete request. If our request is spawning multiple service calls, we can correlate the logs across the different services. Here we are printing the message that we gave at the this location message. This is a trace point. We selected trace point as start. This is priority, priority is info. Log level, this is log level. Elapsed time is zero. And this is a location object. This is very important because it provides the line number. So line number is 18. We can go here and check the line number. So this logger is at line number 18. And this is the component. Here is a file json logger demo.xml so you can see that this is a file name that is printing and this is the flow name container so this is the name json logger demo flow so it gives the flow name as well this information is very useful for support team they can troubleshoot the issue then we are printing the timestamp so it's a put a log in order and here is the content content have payload and this is the payload that we sent from the postman david todd james and henry and it's automatically in json format because we are using this stringify known json locks the json payload in the json format and if it is not uh, in json format if it is in a uh, xml or, or, or text format it actually put in a string and then the application name and the application version and environment so let me show you this part of it in configuration so we gave the application name version environment using the property file now i will show you the property file because i have created a property file already and uh, this is the property file configuration so i already configured the property file in this mule application and here is the mule.environment that's values dab that's why the environment is coming dab here and we are using mule.env environment variable for uh, logging the environment so let's go to the property file this is my property file here i am providing the value for uh, application name and application version you can hard code the value here you can put like a name json logger dash demo and the version 1.0.0 but here i'm using the pom file to get these values so in my pom file values are uh, artifact id is a json dash logger dash demo that's what we are getting here and here is the version so we are getting these value from pom file to get this value from pom file and this property file to work we need to specify in the POM some configuration that is a uh, filtering. So you need to put this block of the code. So filtering can work. So here I put it resources and filter is equal to true. I'm filtering on these directories. And then you can specify the filtering on the plugin also. So once you have this, you can get this value directly from the POM file, you don't have to update here, but you can directly also put here. Whatever way you feel better, you can do that. In this demo, it is taking from the POM.xml. So that's what we are printing here. These are the value, then thread name. Now we are putting one more logger here. And here payload got changed. So because we are putting payload message success, and that's why we are getting the different content correlation id would be same because it's same request message we put it actually flow exiting flow exiting and then trace point we said end 
stress point is end because we are uh, exiting the flow so it gives the pointer to the execution of the flow where we were when we printed this log priority is a uh, info log tab is info elapsed time and then location information log line is 29 so if you go to the log line it is 29 that's why it's printing 29 component is json logger and this is a file name and here is the flow name so it's giving all the detail it helps the support team to troubleshoot the issue then we have a timestamp and we have a content contents payload in this case got changed it is now not the request content it is a new content that we build actually in the transform message so message will be successful and then we are printing the application name application version that would be same across the application because we are using from property file and environment is dev in this case now i will show you how you can uh, disable the fields so we can disable some of the fields like for example we can disable the message content correlation id if we want so i'm putting this here and then i'm taking this uh, property name and i would use this property name inside the configuration So I'm going to disable these fields by using property file. I'm using this property name. Click OK. Save it. I will stop the application and run the project again. I will clear the console and I will go to the postman. I will send one more request and observe the log again now here you can see that correlation id we don't have we don't have message we don't have a content payload missing from both the logs so everywhere those field has been disabled they are not available now i will go back to property file i will make the disabled field empty it will make the all the field enabled click save let me run the endpoint again and i will show you the payload contained inside the log let me run the application first application has been started let me clear the console i will invoke the endpoint one more time Now we can see that we have correlation ID message and the content again, payload we have. Now if security team is asking that do not log the email and phone number because it's it reveals the personal data of the member. So what we can do, we can mask these fields inside the log configuration that will log this information in masked format. I will create one more property that is a masked fields mask field save it and here we already have a mask field right now value is null so I can uh, copy this email and phone that means any child field name with the name email and phone will be masked so this dollar start from content and then dot dot means any child so from content any child so this email or phone in any object will be masked let me save it stop the application and i will run the application again So application has been started, 
let me clear the console i'll go to the postman and invoke the endpoint again now observe the logs we have correlation id message test point everything as it is location information but in the content inside payload email and phone number are masked for each object and the format of the email also maintained and format of the phone number also maintained everywhere readable but still the values are masked so this is very good feature of uh, json logger we can mask the content field this way now i will show you how you can send the log to the rabbit mq i have a rabbit mq started here in my local this is the rabbit mq management console i have created a rabbit mq exchange and i have bind this mu lab exchange to the queue mu lab queue mu lab queue and right now this queue does not have any message now i will configure the mu application to send the log to this queue in rabbit time queue stop the application global elements create connector configuration i'll choose amqp config so this is a configuration name rabbit mq is deployed in my local host port is uh, 5672 let me confirm it 5672 this is port number virtual host is root now i'll provide the username and password so this is a connection detail for rabbit mq let me test it test connection is successful that means i am able to connect to the rabbit mq i will also copy the name of the configuration now i will go to the json logger from here i will go to destinations i will use uh, amqp destination here i will provide the configuration reference and for destination name i will use the rabbit mq exchange name so this is the name of the exchange our configuration is complete i will run the application application has been started let me clear the console now i will go to the postman i will send one more request before that let's check the queue i don't have any message in the queue let me refresh it there is no message here now when we send the request the data will be logged here because of these loggers so we'll see the log in console the log will also will be sent to the rabbit time queue so let me invoke the endpoint we are able to see the log here two messages this is a uh, at the start this payload and then another one at the end at flow exiting and uh, this is the payload now let's go to the rabbit mq queue so we got the two messages let me go to the queue and now retrieve the messages so we have two messages so i will request for two messages get messages we got these messages so this is correlation id and this is the complete log flow starting trace point 
location information time stamp and this is the content this is a message to correlation id location information time stamp and this is the payload content for second log so we are able to see the logs in the queue this is a very helpful feature we can send the log to the queue and from here we can create a one listener client of the rabbit mq queue and that can send the message for analyzing in a hadoop or data lab we can also send the log from this queue to the splunk as well instead of sending directly to the splunk or alk from the log appender we can create a queue listener and that can retrieve the this log from the queue and send to the splunk or the hadoop or the data lag and we can analyze the data and we can use the data for different purpose this is also good feature of the json logger this completes my demo in this demo i showed you how you can deploy the json logger to the exchange in your organization then how you can use the log in your mule application how you can disable the fields how you can uh, mask the fields and at the end i showed you how you can send the log to the rabbit mq this is all in this video if you like this video click the like button and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching thank you very much